guys welcome to basics with Bay. so in today's video i'm going to be giving tips to whoever's going to be starting a new job and more especially in a new place that you're not familiar with and you just don't know where to start exactly and more especially to the person that is maybe on like low budget does not have as much financial support as other people have from their parents so i mean naturally these tips are based on my own experience the things that i wish someone told me or things that i've been told by other people so i mean you might find that it might work for you it might not but i mean just keep watching you never know you might pick up one or two tips okay so first of all save i cannot emphasize the importance of saving even if you're saving 100 rand or 200 rand a month save something because when you start working like you're going to be spending a lot more money than you think you're going to be spending there's going to be money for deposit first month's rent transport food toiletries cleaning stuff you know there's going to be a lot of costs involved and you haven't gotten paid yet so start saving now even if it's like 100 rand 200 rand a month whatever it is just start saving if you'll be working on corporate um best thing is to have it to buy at least two white shirts um, formal pants uh, shoes and if you're going to be buying jeans anytime soon buy jeans that you can also switch up and you know where to work semi-formal but otherwise like I said I don't know what kind of environment you're going to be working in but it's not you need to start considering what kind of clothes you're gonna need when you start working and yeah okay so the next few tips are specifically for finding a place I'm gonna give you five tips finding a place there might even be more than that so first of all go view the place before you put down a deposit and if you can't go yourself ask a friend who lives in the area or who can travel um, and ask them to take pictures videos whatever there are way too many people who've been scammed especially in Johannesburg for property uh, and this is usually even property that they found online you know on the popular platforms so don't just see a place online and say okay call them and send a deposit no get someone to go view that place please do not get scammed in johannesburg this is a top 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 shayala tip always assume that the rent is at least a thousand rand more than what is stipulated and i'm not saying that because no they'll scam me but what is not included in the rent is electricity water wi-fi sometimes even parking um and all these other little things and those things add up so always assume it's at least a thousand rand more i remember in my old place my water and electricity was so much lower i think i only paid 300 rand for electricity and it would last me like a month or two months but this place oh my gosh it's killing me in terms of electricity i'm buying electricity all the time i am so so sick and also when you're calculating this amount that could possibly be a thousand rand more ask yourself if it's value for money please please inquire about the contract because i know in my old place if i had moved in if i had moved out any time before the lease ended then i don't get my deposit when other places if you give like a 30 day notice you'll still get your deposit so definitely definitely ask about like read you through your contract leasing contracts are usually not that long or complicated you just read highlight and remember okay um next to so find a place that is close to work or has a piece of good transport system i.e um taxi bus how train um or has a car bus stop anywhere close by they actually are a lot you can actually google those and if you're going to be driving don't think okay this place is 15 minutes away therefore i'll be grand you know always assume it's at least double that like if it's 15 minutes estimate 30 minutes to get to work or 40 minutes or even an hour um the place i was at was i think a five to ten minute walk from work so every day i was walking back and forth the only thing within Joburg is it's a safety issue like i mean nobody's safe but i mean as a woman walking each day is not advisable yeah no? so I mean lucky for me I don't knock off too late and there were guards here and there but I mean one of the reasons I decided to move was because I just didn't feel like 
living in town was viable anymore um, and also definitely please get a place that is close to shops if you don't have a car you want a place that you can quickly uber to or even walk to um, where I stayed before I was a five to ten minute walk from work five to ten minutes away from I think it was Woolworths and shop rides things like that so you don't want to be struggling just to get groceries you know okay so last tip in terms of finding a place if you don't want to live with a roommate, which I think is not a terrible idea, especially when you start working, um, because it'll cut some of your costs. But we do know that flatmates, roommates, whatever, are stressful. So if you're not going to live with a flatmate, please move into a building where you know at least one other person, whether it's a friend or a colleague. If you're going to be on a grad program, you can always just pop a message to someone and ask where they'll be staying. I didn't think it was a big deal until I actually stayed in a building with someone who was uh, my friend, a colleague, and an old classmate. Um, it was really great to have someone to chat to, first of all, like randomly chat to. Uh, secondly, because like in the first month or so, I didn't have a microwave, so it was nice uh, having the option to just walk up to someone's flat and heat up your food. or. If you forgot to buy like washing powder and you really wanted to do your laundry it's great to just walk to someone's flat um, basically like res you know but it's the adulting version of res you know you're struggling together and you're helping each other out here and there and also like splitting ubers if you're all going to be going somewhere and also just a safety thing you know if you guys can if you guys are gonna go out together and you guys know you can come back together and also just someone to knock at your door if you've been missing for like more than two three days just check if you're alive you know okay uh tip number eight i think um if you can't afford to buy certain things now like just take from home <laughs> take a plate take a few spoons take a mug um yeah just take a few things from home i remember i took all of that and some sugar um and funny enough i still haven't bought things for my kitchen a lot of things for my kitchen anyway because one i'm childish <laughs> two um i don't have a lot of visitors at, at a go so like i don't need that many plates right now you know i don't host a lot of people at a time so i mean how many plates do i have now tip number nine start budgeting for things that you think you'll need um you can like microwave fridge pillows whatever it is start budgeting for it now um and compare prices and also prioritize what you want to get at the first salary second salary you know things like that like you might probably need a microwave first or a fridge first and then later on just obviously depending on how much what you can afford you might be able to afford everything right away but there's also no rush to buying you know all of these things at once take your time it's your space you don't know anyone a perfect place i mean yes we all want a perfect home but at the moment like just be practical if you can't afford a couch right now you can just buy a camp chair i mean <laughs> i mean i know we make a lot of banter a lot of jokes about like midrand people and their camp chairs but i think the joke there really is just the priorities you know having a flashy car when you only have an onion in your fridge you know <laughs> but i mean priorities are different P people's pockets are different you might not be, need to be sending money home and, which means you might only be able to buy a couch like six months later which i think is fine i know people who when they started working were sleeping in a sleeping bag for the first month um and later on were able to buy a bed and you know i'm not saying that struggles are great it's not but just look at what you have and what you can do right now don't just go out and spend all the money because i mean i have all this money now you know so just just plan budget and plan for well budgeting is planning so last tip check out deco fern um it's not the best quality um and they take long to deliver you will wait maybe a month or so for them to deliver um but it's affordable you know i bought this couch uh, at deco fern i bought my my coffee table bookcase um ottoman and a bunch of other stuff that are practical um right now 
I know there's certain things you can't compromise quality on, and I understand that. You know, I'm not, and so I'm not saying go buy poor quality things everywhere. But if you just want things that can work for you right now for the first year or two, then definitely um, Deco Fern is your guy. And there are probably other cheap furniture outlets out there, you know. And if you do know some, please comment below. Bonus tip, please, please do your research. And again, do not be pressured by people. Don't just run to buy a car just because, you know, you think a working class person needs to be having a car. There's no rush, you know. Aban Duazotini will not pull you out of debt when you get into debt when you start working. Please take your time with these things. Look, I'm not saying don't buy nice things, but please, please do your research before you just jump into installments and things like that. I will make a separate video for um, what to look out for when you're getting a car, just based on my own experiences again. But yeah, so just look out for that. This is not another tip. I just wanted to emphasize the first point that please save. Save, save, save. Saving will save your life. Just get into the habit that saving is not a luxury. It's an expense. Save the moment your salary comes in. The moment your salary comes in, you must just save. And I'm not going to say save 10%, save 20%, because I don't know what how much you're going to be earning. And I don't know what your other responsibilities are. Only you can determine how much you can save. But make sure that you do save. Okay, guys, that's all the tips that I have for today. Um, if I do think of anything else, I'll put it in the description box or in the comments or something. Uh, if you have any questions, please do put it in the comments. Or if you have any tips to share or experiences, please also share it in the comments. Let's chat about it. Let's help each other out, you know. Um, there's someone who's nervous about working next year. They don't even know where to start. So yeah, let's help each other out And I really hope that my tips helped you in some way um, Good luck for your new job and if you are still searching for a job listen Keep at it. Keep at it. Please keep at it. Don't give up. I know the job applying process is tiring. It's exhausting it You know but I just want you to know that you are worth it and you are smart, you are capable. Rejection letters are not the end of your journey. So please keep knocking on those doors. Break them down if you have to, sis. Please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this video. Share any tips, share any of your experiences. Yeah, let's chat.